More Starlink hardware is now approved for in-motion use. Come and join us to find out what hardware this is. Hi, I'm Dan from the Mobile Internet Resource Center. So SpaceX has received FCC approval for official in-motion use for the standard Gen 3 hardware that was released a few months ago, and also for the upcoming, not released yet, mini-dish. Now, both of this hardware was originally approved back in September 2023 for fixed location use, but the in-motion uh, approval from FCC was delayed, most likely to objections from competitors. But now that approval has come through, and officially Starlink now has the flat HP dish, the standard Gen 3, and the upcoming mini dish will all be approved for in-motion high-speed use. This is going to give users a lot more choices and a lot more opportunity to stay connected while in motion and using Starlink. Being able to stay connected while actively traveling in your RV is important to some RVers. It may be that a person in the RV needs to work while they're traveling down the road, or it may be to keep the kids entertained. And while this is sometimes possible with cellular, you can't always rely on cellular connectivity in some parts of the U.S. And so when Starlink offered in-motion use available while traveling, some RVers jumped on that. However, this has only been available officially with the flat HP dish, and that hardware comes at a premium price of $2,500, and there's also a little higher power usage for RVers that are going to be off-grid. Now, some RVers have managed to unofficially have in-motion using the previous Gen 2 standard actuated hardware and modifying it or making it in such a way that they could keep it flat while driving. Uh, and the latest Gen 3 hardware people have also managed to use that unofficially in motion. But now with the approval coming through for the Gen 3, people that own that hardware can now use it officially in motion uh, with the correct plan. And of course, when the new mini dish is released, that's going to come out of the gate already approved for in motion. In order to use your Starlink hardware in motion, one of the things you need to be able to do is is permanently secure it to your RV so it's safe, so it's not gonna fly off as you're, as you're driving down the road. The flat HP dish has always come with a wedge mount that allowed you to permanently attach it to your RV. Uh, when people were modifying the Gen 2 or the Gen 3, uh, there were some aftermarket solutions that allowed them to uh, permanently mount these to their RV. However, with this new announcement of the FCC approval, Starlink has also released a new mobility mount available in the Starlink store for the Gen 3 hardware that allows it to attach it to your RV and also remove it from the RV when you don't want it attached, which makes it a great mount to be able to use for this uh, purpose. In order to officially have in-motion data over 10 miles per hour from Starlink, you need to be subscribed to a plan that gives you mobile priority data. Now, for most RVers, they are using a mobile regional plan that gives them roaming access around the US, Canada, and Mexico. But officially, this plan doesn't give you in-motion data over 10 miles per hour. However, while subscribed to this plan, you can opt in to mobile priority data at $2 a gigabyte, and that will officially give you in-motion data while traveling at speeds over 10 miles per hour. Just remember to turn that off when you stop, or you could acquire um, quite a bill at the end of your billing cycle and not realize it. Now, the other option is just to subscribe to the mobile priority data plan. That is $250 a month and gives you 50 gigabyte of priority data. While this is, while this plan does give you priority data, unfortunately, it doesn't give you any control over when you use the first 50 gigs of that data. It is used automatically at the beginning of your billing cycle, whether you need it or not. And for most RVers, if they don't need it right then, they're going to run through that 50 gigabytes pretty quickly and then have to purchase more data. So for this reason, for most RVers, staying on mobile regional plan at $150 a month in the U.S. and only opting in to mobile priority when you need it is a much better option. If you are traveling globally outside your home continent, then you're going to need a global plan, which the mobile priority 50 gigabyte plan allows you to do. And so you may need to just have that as your plan, which gives you the 50 gigs of priority data. And you may still need to opt in for those times you need in motion over 10 miles per hour. For those on boats, uh, the in motion over 10 miles per hour may not be as important. There are some boats that simply don't cruise that fast. And so for those users, they may be fine just staying on mobile regional if their speeds are kept under 10 miles per hour. Now, on the other hand, 
boaters tend to travel internationally a lot more. And the same thing applies if they're traveling outside their home continent or outside their home country for more than two months. They may need a global plan, which the mobile priority uh, plan will satisfy that. The other thing we see is in the boating community is the flat HP dish. It has been adapted a little more often just because it is higher spec hardware with uh, components that are better suited for extreme temperatures and weather. So some people have opted into that higher end uh, hardware on boats already, and then some may stay subscribed to the mobile priority 50 gigabyte plan to have open ocean use and in motion data for 10 miles per hour. Now for those who are on a budget and want to stick with the standard hardware, uh, they can of course do that and uh, they'll just need to be on the correct plan for the type of travel they'll be doing. Since the Gen 3 hardware is now officially approved for in motion, that's certainly going to make it attractive to more, more borrowers who may have wanted to play it safe and thought they should have the flat HP hardware just to make sure they were not denied in motion use. But now that the Gen 3 hardware is approved, they can choose between that hardware, the, the, the flat HP, or the upcoming Mini when that is released. It's great to see the latest Gen 3 standard hardware officially approved for in motion. Starlink certainly had in motion use in mind when they designed it, and now users can officially take advantage of that. As mentioned, the mini dish was also approved for in motion, but this hardware hasn't been released yet. There's only been a little bit of information shared on this hardware, such as it's going to be pretty portable, maybe the size of a MacBook computer. We don't really know specs yet or if the small size is going to be affect the performance. But we're looking forward to it being released, and certainly it's going to be met with excitement when it is finally released from Starlink. We'll have more information on that when it is released. So let us know. Have you been using Starlink in motion uh, prior to this with unapproved hardware? Are you glad to see this change is now in place and you can use a standard Gen 3 in motion? Uh, even the uh, Gen 2 recently got a software update to be able to lay it flat. Even though officially it's still not approved for in motion and it's also still used at your own risk. But let us know which hardware you use and if in motion use is important to you. Thanks. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.